The bombardment of Algiers was an attempt by Britain to end the slavery practices of the day of Algiers. An Anglo-Dutch fleet under the command of Admiral Lord Exmouth bombarded ships and the harbour defences of Algiers. Although there was a continuing campaign by various European and the American navies to suppress the piracy against Europeans by the North African Barbary states, the specific aim of this expedition was to free Christian slaves and to stop the practice of enslaving Europeans. To this end, it was partially successful as the Day of Algiers freed around 3,000 slaves following the bombardment and signed a treaty against the slavery of Europeans. However, this slavery did not end completely until the European conquest of Africa. Background Following the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815, the Royal Navy no longer needed the Barbary States as a source of supplies for Gibraltar and the fleet in the Mediterranean Sea. This freed Britain to exert considerable political pressure to force the Barbary States to end their piracy and practice of enslaving European Christians. In early 1816, Exmouth undertook a diplomatic mission, backed by a small squadron of ships of the line to Tunis, Tripoli, and Algiers to convince the Dees to stop the practice and free the Christian slaves. The Dees of Tunis and Tripoli agreed without any resistance, but the day of Algiers was more recalcitrant and the negotiations were stormy. Exmouth believed that he had managed to negotiate a treaty to stop the slavery of Christians and return to England. However, due to confused orders, Algerian troops massacred 200 Corsican, Sicilian and Sardinian fishermen who were under British protection just after the treaty was signed. This caused outrage in Britain and Europe, and Exmouth's negotiations were seen as a failure. As a result, Exmouth was ordered to sea again to complete the job and punish the Algerians. He gathered a squadron of five ships of the line, one 50-gun fourth-rate ship, four frigates, and five bombships. HMS Queen Charlotte, 100 guns, was his flagship and Rear Admiral David Milne was his second in command aboard HMS Impregnable, 98 guns. This squadron was considered by many to be an insufficient force. But Exmouth had already unobtrusively surveyed the defences of Algiers, he was very familiar with the town, and was aware of a weakness in the field of fire of the defensive batteries. He believed that more large ships would have interfered with each other without being able to bring much more fire to bear. In addition to the main fleet, there were four sloops, eight ships, boats armed with Congreve rockets, and some transports to carry the rescued slaves. When the British arrived in Gibraltar, a squadron of five Dutch frigates and the corvette Eendracht, led by Vice Admiral Theodorus Frederick van Capellen, offered to join the expedition. Exmouth decided to assign them to cover the main force from Algerian flanking batteries, as there was insufficient space in the mole for the Dutch frigates. Plan of attack The day before the attack the frigate Prometheus arrived and its captain. B. Dashwood attempted to secretly rescue the British consul and his wife and infant. Some of the rescue party was discovered and arrested. The attack was described by the U.S. consul. The plan of attack was for the larger ships to approach in a column. They were to sail into the zone where the majority of the Algerian guns could not be brought to bear. Then, they were to come to anchor and bombard the batteries and fortifications on the mole to destroy the defences. Simultaneously, HMS Leander, 50 guns, was to anchor off the mouth of the harbour and bombard the shipping inside the mole. To protect Leander from the shore battery, two frigates, HMS 7 and Glasgow, were to sail inshore and bombard the battery. Troops would then storm ashore on the mole with sappers of the Corps of Royal Engineers. Bombardment Exmouth and Queen Charlotte anchored approximately 80 yards off the mole, facing the Algerian guns. 
However, a number of the other ships, notably Admiral Milne aboard HMS Impregnable, anchored out of position. In the case of Milne's ship 400 yards from where it should have been, this error reduced the effectiveness of these ships and exposed them to fiercer Algerian fire. Some of the other ships sailed past Impregnable and anchored in positions closer to the plan. The unfortunate gap created by the misplaced HMS Impregnable was closed by the frigate HMS Granicus and the sloop Heron. In their earlier negotiations, both Exmouth and the Day of Algiers had stated that they would not fire the first shot. The day's plan was to allow the fleet to anchor and then to sortie from the harbour and board the ships with large numbers of men in small boats. But, Algerian discipline was less effective and one Algerian gun fired a shot at 15.15. Exmouth immediately began the bombardment. The Algerian flotilla of 40 gunboats made an attempt to board Queen Charlotte whilst the sailors were aloft setting sail, but 28 of their boats were sunk by broadsides, the remaining ran themselves on shore. After an hour, the cannon on the mole were effectively silenced, and Exmouth turned his attention to the shipping in the harbour, which was destroyed by 1930. One unmanned Algerian frigate was destroyed after being boarded by the crew of Queen Charlotte's barge, who then set it on fire. Three other Algerian frigates and five corvettes were destroyed by the fire of mortars and rockets. The burning shipping, drifting in the harbour for some bombarding ships to manoeuvre out of their way. Impregnable, isolated from the other ships was a large and tempting target. Attracting attention from the Algerian gunners who raked her fore and aft, she was severely damaged. 268 shots hit the hull. The main mast was damaged in 15 places, 50 killed and 164 wounded. Although the fleet also bombarded the city, there was comparatively little damage as the construction of the houses meant that cannonballs passed through the walls, leaving a neat hole without destroying them. The explosive mortar shells and rockets caused some destruction to domestic buildings, and the shipping in the harbour burned so fiercely that the warehouses nearby caught light and were burnt down. At 2000, Milne asked that a sloop that had been fitted out as an explosion vessel, with 143 barrels of gunpowder aboard, be used against the lighthouse battery, which was mauling his ship. The vessel was exploded, but to little effect and against the wrong battery. Despite this, the Algerian batteries could not maintain fire and by 2215, Exmouth gave the order for the fleet to weigh anchor and sail out of range, leaving HMS Minden to keep firing to suppress any further resistance. The wind had changed and blowing from the shore helped the fleet depart. By 1.30 the next morning, the fleet was anchored out of range. The wounded were treated, and the crew cleared the damage caused by the Algerian guns. Casualties on the British side were 128 killed and 690 wounded. As a comparison, the British casualties at the Battle of Trafalgar had been only 9%. The Allied squadron had fired over 50,000 round shot using 118 tons of gunpowder, and the bomb vessels had fired 960 explosive mortar shells. The Algerian forces had had 308 guns and 7 mortars. Result The following day at noon, Exmouth sent the following letter to the day. Sir, for your atrocities at Boner on defenseless Christians and your unbecoming disregard of the demands I made yesterday in the name of the Prince Regent of England. The fleet under my orders has given you a signal chastisement by the total destruction of your navy, storehouse, and arsenal, with half your batteries. As England does not war for the destruction of cities, I am unwilling to visit your personal cruelties upon the unoffending inhabitants of the country and I therefore offer you the same terms of peace which I conveyed to you yesterday in my sovereign's name. Without the acceptance of these terms, you can have no peace with England. He warned that if they were not accepted, then he would continue the action. 
The day accepted the terms, not realizing that they were a bluff, as the fleet had already fired off almost all of its ammunition. A treaty was signed on September 24, 1816. The room it was signed in had been hit by nine round shot and was a perfect ruin. The day freed 1,083 Christian slaves and the British consul and repaid the ransom money taken 1816, about £80,000. Over 3,000 slaves in total were later freed. After some time, Algiers and other Barbary states renewed their piracy and slavery, as they earned revenues from the ransoms for some European slaves and had a market for others.